Welcome. When looking at Gauss Bonnet on surfaces, one has at some point invoke Euler characteristic justify that one can triangulate a surface and get a canonical Euler characteristic. Now, this is an interesting topic also in the discrete, and uh, we can call it two manifold. It's a finite simple graph such that every unit sphere is a cyclic graph. I have here an example of a printout of a two-dimensional sphere. It's a two-manifold because every unit sphere is a cyclic graph with four or more elements. This is one of the six positive curvature spheres. But we can also look at other topological types, and there is the well-known classification every two manifold is a connected sum of tori, so it's the sphere, or one torus, two torus, these are the orientable cases, or then connected sums of projective planes. The two projective planes gives you the Klein bottle, etc. So you have a, a playground to study a minimal problem, which I started to look at. The minimal problem is to minimize the surface area among these uh, manifolds. And uh, minimal means that we cannot further, we cannot make it smaller by uh, edge collapse. That's a very natural operation. You can take an edge, you collapse it. What you do is you identify these points A and B and you get now a uh, path graph instead of this kite. So this kite will be flattened and you can also reverse that and uh, get edge refinements. So this is an interesting, produces an interesting equivalence relation between discrete manifolds. We never ever invoke the continuum. Uh, we are looking at graphs. This is a graph theoretical problem. And uh, what happens in two manifolds when once you have the Euler characteristic fixed, then all the, you know, the numbers, the number of vertices, number of edges, number of faces are determined if you give one of them. For example, give the number of faces. I like to actually give the number of vertices because they are kind of smaller and uh, then I'm searching. So I was searching here kind of uh, with the computer. Actually, actually, I'm running right now. I'm running some code and I can, for example, take a Klein bottle and start with a larger Klein bottle and then reduce it and see where I'm ending up. So this is a, a heat flow. It is, you know, ending at some point because you cannot make it smaller. So there is some randomness invoked if you are searching for minima. And uh, so depending on the path, you get different minima. And uh, actually, in the case of the sphere, there's only one minimum. That's the heat flow, which is also I have used this for showing that the non-prismatic two-sphere can be colored with four colors so that no cyclic Kempe chain exists. This is a cyclic coloring and it uses the four color theorem. So it is built on the four color theorem, but it's still uh, uh, kind of nice because uh, it relates to questions which Greenbaum has asked uh, a long time ago. <clears throat> so uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm still interested here to kind of see, understand what kind of minima uh, exist. Maybe we can characterize these minima, I don't know. So this, especially the Taurus case seems to be pretty rich. I was actually only this morning starting with started with this uh, examples and uh, so I'm ending up always with uh, 15 or m most of the time I'm ending up with 15 when I'm doing the Klein bottle. RP2 gives 11 or 12 vertices so I have to look so maybe a larger scale search gives a better uh, a picture uh, about this uh, minimal surfaces. Also interesting and kind of I don't know of a nice poorly combinatorial proof of this uh, classification of two manifolds. We don't want to invoke the continuum. Right? You can always, everything you see in topology books invokes the continuum. You kind of use the homeomorphisms, classical homeomorphisms of surfaces to justify the 
the classification, but we want to have that uh, in a combinatorial way, and especially with this equivalence relation. So there are other equivalence relations. You can also do diagonal flips, which are called Pochner moves, and then there is a theorem which uh, Pochner has proven it in the 90s. Faces. Also here, what I've seen, there's, there are non-isomorphic tori which have the same number of uh, vertices. So again, I got 15. Maybe I also show kind of a little movie about the heat flow. I just start with a large, you know, barycentric refined graph, let the heat flow work on it, and then see how it goes to the octahedron, the smallest one and uh, which is a unique attractor in this case. That's it for today.